when he was at Cincinnati, he would be at that big arena and they would announce Chris Vogt from Mayfield, Kentucky. To me, it just was not only a sense of pride for Chris, but I just felt a sense of pride for all of Mayfield. And I was just like, always thought, oh, I just wish all of Mayfield could see this right now. My wife still kids me that when we went to go watch him at Cincinnati, a tear was in my, you know, and it was. There was a lot of pride there. And, and seeing what he's been able to accomplish, you can't beat the character of Chris Vogt. You've got an individual here that comes from Mayfield, a very small community. They've grown to know Chris from watching him play for the last four years. All three places, whether it was Northern or Cincinnati or now in Wisconsin, they get familiar with it, they get familiar with the players, but the reason why they're watching is because of Chris. Growing up in Mayfield, your typical like small town, about 10,000, everybody knew everybody. It seemed like you couldn't go anywhere around town without running into somebody you knew. Chris wanted to pursue basketball because he, you know, recognized that God gave him this gift to be quite tall and he was asked constantly, you know, how tall are you? He had statistics on how many people that are seven foot and are in the NBA. <laughs> During my time in my 18 years at Grays, I think we've had three kids that have gone on to play collegiately. That's it. So, and Chris is the only one at the Division One level. So. Chris is definitely special in that category. Bowen underneath, dunks that one over and around Liddell. Going back to December 11th, the day of the Ohio State game, the first text I see in my phone was just a text from my former coach, and all it said was, are your parents okay? And I had no idea what he was talking about, and I knew my parents were on their way from Mayfield to Columbus for the game. He thought maybe we had been in a car accident. <laughs> and um, then he got looking on his phone and realized that there was a terrible storm in Mayfield. The National Weather Service says that a violent tornado ripped through the western part of the state, killing at least 75 people. The search effort transitioning to a recovery mission in some parts across America's heartland. We didn't really quite understand the extent of it till we returned back to Mayfield on Sunday. And to see it with your own eyes is just devastating. On December 10th, a tornado came through here in Mayfield, Kentucky at my house and it wiped out most of the house. My dad gave me a call and said, hey, this tornado is actually really serious. It's gonna be dangerous, so get under the crawl space of the house. And about 20 minutes after that, the tornado hit. If he wouldn't have called and I wouldn't have got underneath the house, um, could have been in some real danger because the roof right here collapsed exactly where I was sitting. We got up underneath the house just in time. This is my bedroom. I'd say I've known Trevor probably since elementary school. We've always just grown up playing against each other in basketball or with each other in basketball. When I found out what happened with Trevor's situation, all the stuff you grow up with, and that's the house they grew up with, and just seeing it torn apart like that was just awful. I was just kind of thinking, like, this terrible thing happened. I'm all the way in Wisconsin. What can I do from seven or eight hours away to help out? And that's when I thought of the GoFundMe. Chris reached out to me about the GoFundMe that he started to raise money for Mayfield and tornado support in the surrounding areas. It was cool to see Chris use his platform to raise awareness, to help people out. Being able to go back and help serve my hometown in person. Seeing the memorials, the historic buildings of Mayfield that have been there since the day it was built, just torn apart or like falling down. Overall, just kind of the whole trip kind of had a pit in my stomach. This felt kind of like a movie, like a war zone, just all the damage and seeing people I've grown up with, just seeing their livelihoods, their businesses, their houses, just affected the way they were. It was uplifting, it was encouraging in this time um, to know that people who aren't even from here, don't know people from here, just know Chris and where he's from. We're generous and we're giving and cared. And not only people with their money, but with their prayers and their thoughts. Delivering the check to the Mayfield Graves County Tornado Relief Fund, 
it was pretty cool to see, just kind of seeing how my platform could be used for good and seeing how that good could immediately impact other people's lives and affect them for the better. Even with the circumstances and the storm and, and the pain and the heartache, there is some really good things coming out of this. And Chris being one of those with raising the money and the support, he is someone who is helping out other people that he doesn't even know their names, but knows that they're from where he's from. I love this guy. <laughs> Rebound to both and the foul. He's been good for Wisconsin the whole game. Anytime he's been in, he's had positive minutes. When playing, I try to focus on playing basketball, but Mayfield's still definitely on my mind. What I can do to help, what I can do, just help the people there, the city, whatever. He was born and raised here. This is the only place he's ever lived. He's got friends, family here. I know he talks to him quite often, but um, you know he's he's got to do what he's got to do, playing basketball at Wisconsin and getting a good education. But he can also help our community. It is going to take a lot of time and money to rebuild Mayfield. The pictures that you see sometimes are just like a little snapshot of what the whole thing is. When we watch basketball. It does kind of take us away from some of our day-to-day -day cares. There's something that's a common bond. Maybe they wouldn't have necessarily cheered for Wisconsin in the past, but now because they know somebody on there, they're really following it. I've heard a lot of people talk about watching Chris on TV. It does bring a lot of hope to our community. And even if it's a two-hour block where they don't have to think about the things that they're going through in their own life, Chris has provided that opportunity for them. One thing about our community, they love their Kentucky Wildcats, but they also love Chris Bo. And if Chris is on TV, they're gonna take that opportunity to watch him play. You'd be surprised how many Wisconsin fans there are in Mayfield, Kentucky. I can't go anywhere in this city without somebody coming up to me and saying, hey, we really appreciate what Chris has done. And, uh, you know, I'm very proud of him and think he's done a wonderful job.